Could you pay for your tractor in just one project? Well, that depends, right? Depends on the size of the project, what kind of project it is. When I started thinking about it, with this one I'm in the middle of right now, I think you could do just that. So let's run through it. We're all looking for ways to justify tractor ownership, right? And uh, out here, 40 acres, a lot of things to do. I'm in the middle of a big project. I got a lot of it done in the fall, but I got a lot more to do. And that's putting gravel down a gravel lane. Got to bring that lane all the way back here to the barn gravel parking pads and turnarounds and everything else. So a lot of work to be done. And I thought, man, how much would that be for me to hire out to a contractor? And did a lot of Google searches, a lot of ranges out there on cost per foot to have gravel installed, like on a gravel driveway. And most of those results turned up a range of one to three dollars, you know, maybe a two dollar average per square foot. And certainly there's a lot of factors that go into that cost. And if you're gonna take this seriously, it may be worth getting some contractors, having those quotes come in to see how much they would charge you. We've done a lot of renovation on our house and our shop this year, and I'll tell you what, I think things are more on the high side these days than anywhere near the middle. Okay, I'd take some notes, all right? So I did a little bit of math. I calculated the square feet, just the total length of what I've done already around here and then the width of it. I'm gonna have 22,400 square feet of surface area square feet to cover, okay? And that's not the depth, right? So we're gonna put that in some areas, maybe four inches, some six, some eight, depends what it is. But at that average cost of $2 a foot, that's, that's almost 45 grand to have this project done. $45,000. $45,000. And that includes all the labor, the material, the equipment, their overhead, their insurance, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of room to play with there. So let's run through the numbers on doing it ourselves and see just how much we could save. All right, so there's gonna be some variables. There's gonna be some must-haves in, in all of this. So your numbers could vary. You could probably justify it one way or another, however you want to. I'm gonna use eight inches of material all around. That's just how I'm gonna calculate this. So more on the high side, you don't need eight inches really for a parking pad for most things. If you have really heavy equipment or it's gonna be used in a certain way, maybe so. So we're gonna start with four inches of a cheaper material. It's called 22A, that's what we use around here. At our other property, we put in a 2000 foot drive with just 22A material. It's about half the cost of the, the nicer, cleaner finish 21AA that we'll top dress it with, with another four inches. So that cost for the first 277 yards at $21.45 a delivered yard, okay, cubic yard, is basically six grand. Now we're gonna top that off with another four inches of the nicer stuff, the 21 AA, $35.10 a cubic yard, gets us to about $9,800 uh, for that. And again, that's delivered, all right? I've already had all these numbers available because I've had all these deliveries done, either out here or at our other property, and so I've, I've got recent data because it's not just the, the cost per yard of the stone, but it's the delivery uh, driver, his time as well, and they charge by the hour there. Before we get too deep on the other options you might want to consider, first let's talk about the company that you hire to do it. If they have an experienced driver, an experienced operator with their dump truck, then they can tailgate that material and take a lot of the work off of your hands. We use Balkama Excavate and we've used them out here, use them at another place too, and Tom out there, he's he just does all the deliveries for me. He's awesome at what he does. He knows what I need, but he just lays it down smooth. And it's really just kind of almost just cleanup work after that because he lays it down so well, a nice consistent layer. And it just takes so much of the headache. We've, we've had some big massive piles of material dropped off and it is so much work to spread all those out with your tractor compared to having it done with the truck. It's a huge time savings. So lock that down before you select your company. Okay, so so far we're at about $16,000 out of our $45,000 budget, so 29 grand left to work with there. But we have some options to still consider, and I've done this both ways, all right? In geotextile, that fabric, that road fabric you can lay down underneath is gonna be a big one, and you're gonna hear, you're gonna see it in the comments down here, you must get it, it's a waste of time. You're gonna see it both ways, all right? And honestly, you gotta make your own decision there. Where I think I stand on it is, it's a trade-off. You're gonna have to do more prep work if you don't wanna use geo fabric versus if you do wanna use it. And I've done it both ways. We stripped off, well, you wanna strip off the topsoil. And depending on your area, that could be just a few inches and it could be two feet of topsoil. You gotta to get rid of the organic material because otherwise, and I'm standing here on purpose, I, I want you guys to see this area. This doesn't have any geo fabric down on it. We haven't done anything here yet. I had a load of uh, three inch stone for another project dropped off here. And this is just kind of the leftovers, this big 
this big stuff like this, all right? Um, beginning of November is when the stuff was dropped off, scooped out what we needed, and just kind of scraped down the rest of what we had. And you can see how it's sinking down into the topsoil that's here. We've had a lot of traffic back and forth on it when we've been finishing off our barn. And this is what happens if you don't have the right base that's down. Now there's geofabric, you could lay that down and put stone on top of here and it's not gonna sink down into it. But if you have organic mud, right? Topsoil like this, then that stone as it's driven down is gonna pack down, it's gonna disappear and you're gonna have the same mess. You're gonna be right where you started. So here's a really good example in the lane that we're gonna gravel. You can see the darker topsoil, but then you can see in these ruts that have been driven over where it's washed away. And we're down to the next layer down below that, which is gonna be sand. The difference is the topsoil is full of organic material and organic matter that's gonna break down over time. That's why topsoil is really good for growing grass and weeds and everything else. But nothing grows in sand, right? There's, there's no organic material there. There's no um, nutrition value that's in there at all. It's not gonna break down either. So it's a really solid substance to start your foundation, but that's where the decision might come into play, right? How much topsoil do you need to strip out? If it's just a few inches like this, maybe you go for it. You, know, you can still lay down geofabric on top of it if you want to, but that's a decision you have to make. And another really good example, we're right on the edge of where we put our road fabric down and we're gonna extend up this way. You can see some of the stone is spilled over to the other side. And on this side over here, there's nowhere for that stone to sink down into. But on the other side, off of the road fabric, you can see how everything's pressed down in there. This area's been driven on a lot, and this is what's gonna happen. You're just gonna have to bring in more stone over time. If you try to, to pull it back up, you know, with a box plane or a land plane, you're just gonna mix in all sorts of dirt along with it. It's never gonna look right. So that's the decision you have to make. It's a critical one but you need to do it right the first time. Folks, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you own a tractor and you're gonna need more attachments in the future. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. Now our 2000 foot drive we put out at our other property we stripped off the topsoil, so we had just a, a nice sand base that was there. We brought in our 21A, about eight inches of that we have. Right now, that's all pressed down and it's, and it's doing great. Um, out here, I did it a little bit differently. The first small section coming off the road, I did not put any geo down. There was already stone there that was existing. I don't know if it had geo fabric underneath it or not, but then the rest of what we've done so far had fabric underneath there. I just kind of roughed up the top couple of inches with a, a soil pulverizer and stripped that little bit off just to, I didn't want the drive to stick up too high. Um, so I got it down a little bit, then rolled out the fabric. It was nice and smooth that way. And then we had Tom, our driver, tailgate everything layer and layer. And then you can use your tractor in between, you yeah, know, well, what do you have? 10, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 deliveries, something like that. Um, you're just kind of smoothing it out in between. He'll also drive over that and compact it down. You need something heavy to roll over it and get that stone to stay in place too. And so that's a big benefit as well of a good driver. Now I've been trying to find the geo fabric as cheap as I can. On Amazon, it's gonna be around $1,400, $1,500 for me to get what I need to do it here. There is a made in the USA option as well, but it's literally, I think, four times the price of getting the, the not made in the USA version. And so for me, that's gonna be a tough pill to swallow, but there's a big range a project this size, about 1500 to almost six grand, I think it was, uh, to get the made in the USA version. So that's an optional cost, but again, getting that fabric is saving more prep time. You don't have to take out nearly as much topsoil depending on what conditions you're working with. For me, going down this lane, I'm gonna strip out some. Just to, again, I don't want that road built up too high, but I'm not gonna strip out a lot. I'm gonna use fabric everywhere here. I think it's gonna save maybe money in the long run, effort up front for sure, and just make it an easier job to tackle. So I'm gonna budget two grand for the Geo on, you know, something, one of the cheaper ones, not the made in the USA one, unfortunately, but even if you did, that's another four grand, something like that. Uh, but with two grand plus a 16, we're at $18,000 out of our $45,000 budget. What are we sitting at? 27 grand left to work with. 
Another factor you got to think about is a culvert. And some areas are going to need them, some are not. I have been trying to avoid them whenever I possibly can, and so far I've only had to put in one uh, in our different roads that we've had. This last attempt was pretty much an effort of trying to work with the terrain instead of kind of working against it and trying to get the water to change direction. Um, it's nice to put a crown on your gravel drive if you can. It's gonna let the water kind of slope off to both sides instead of sitting there and pooling and puddling. But in a different area that I had out here, it was kind of on the side of the hill, right? We were driving this way and it was kind of tilted. So I just included that slight plane, you know, that slight hill or slope with my driveway. So instead of having a big crown in there and water would want to get kind of hung up here on the high side, the water just in general just kind of naturally wants to sheet off. There haven't been any any ruts, any washouts, anything like that as of yet, and we're in the middle of our rainy season. It's just the first winter, so we'll see how it is long run. And you can always dig out the gravel, right, and put in a culvert if you need to. Um, it's not like an asphalt driveway or concrete, or that's a really big challenge. It's a lot easier to do with stone, but a culvert's an extra expense to consider. Okay, so what do you really need to put in a gravel driveway? Well, you can get by with a small tractor like this Summit right here. Get something on the back of it. Could be a box blade, could be a land plane. Right here we had the box plane, the best of both worlds, okay? You get that from Summit Tractors there. On the front, you're gonna have a bucket. We've got our grapple on here now. I'm too lazy to take it off, but just a bucket that comes with your loader is all you need up front. The caveat is the soil preparation, all right? And something that I do like to do, and it's not a requirement by any means, but I like to till that topsoil before I'm, I'm getting rid of it. And the reason I like to do that is because oftentimes there's weeds and sod and everything else that's mixed in with there. And you can use the shanks on your real rear tool here and just kind of rough it up and, and loosen it up a bit before you scoop it out and get it out of the way. But I like to have that soil ready to go. And so with something like a tiller that you go through first and work up the top two, three, four, five inches of soil, all that sods chopped up really nicely, all the weeds are, everything's nice and fluffy, you know, it's ready to go and be reused at another project. So if you have some landscaping needs around your house or you're gonna use it in the future for something and you're not sure what, you don't have to worry about those big sod clumps and getting fishing all those out later on, that soil is just ready to reuse. Okay, so we have $27,000 left to work with before we start to exceed what it would cost for a contractor to come here and do the work themselves. So the tractor here, currently about $19,000, according to Summit's website, that's with the front end loader and the bucket. Okay, add on your rear tool, all right? That could be 1,500 to 2,500 bucks. We're gonna use 2,500 bucks on the high side. So we're at 21.5. Let's just throw in some random costs, like all the fuel that you have. Let's say you, I don't know, let's say you break something, right? Let's just throw another 500 bucks, get that up to around $3,000. So you have the 19 for the tractor, three grand for the attachment, and the miscellaneous fuel and things that break and go wrong. So we're at, we're at $22,000, we still have five grand to play with. Let's add on a tiller for three grand, okay? Tiller, so now we're at $25,000, we still have two grand to play with. I don't know, get a grapple. And then we're basically right at the same budget to have a contractor come here and do it. And yet at the end of the day, now we've got a tractor. Instead of paying a contractor to do it, we just had a whole bunch of seat time, we got to do it ourselves, take our time, make sure it was done the way that we wanted it to be done. I'm telling you, if, if, if I can do a gravel drive install project than you guys can too. It's a fun, easy job to get done. You get to know your tractor a little bit better. You get time outside. You have something fun to come home and do when you're done with work. It doesn't have to be knocked out all at one time. You can chip away at this too, right? It's just something you can plug away at in the evenings, on the weekend. It doesn't take too long once you have a good driver to deliver your stone. So folks, there you have it. That's how you can pay for your tractor in just one project. And of course, situations vary, but it just kind of came to mind with what I have going on out here. And of course, maybe if you're looking for that side hustle, right, you want to do this kind of thing for other folks, well, it helps you justify that cause too. You can make a case for it there and there's risk involved with everything, right? But you, you got to have fun going through the numbers and kind of wondering what it would be like. And this gives you another way to justify owning a tractor, having it around your property, just one project here. We're using our tractor all the time, every day. I know a lot of you guys are too, so if you have something else to share, maybe a similar situation that helped you justify getting your tractor, let us know, leave a comment down below. And if you're in the market for something for your tractor, for the front end loader or the three point hitch, we'd love to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. 
We include free shipping, rewards, and financing too. And if you want to see how this gravel project turns out, then hit that subscribe button down below to follow along. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Oh,